may well be welcome to another broadcast of the Institute Life for All. We are in this steamed subject, who has ears, let them hear. We are reaching message eight, Philadelphia, the return to the church at the age of revelations. Revelations chapter 3, verse 7, which says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing says, He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Let us keep here to the first part. This thing says, he who is holy. Our God is the only holy God. He is completely distinct of anything that could be similar. He's unique, he's one, he's distinct. And he's also the who is true. Besides him, there's no one that is true. He is the only true God. Here, Apostle Peter, he wrote a letter, his first letter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 reads, related to this. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So, beloved saints, God wants to make this return of the church that lost itself along the centuries, more than 19 centuries of degradation. The Lord wants finally to bring back the church, His church, to its original situation, which God had designed for the church. We already said that the enemy of God paid attention that the work of God was done through the word that he gave to his apostle, his prophet. So the enemy destroyed the love for the word that the prophet spoke and in the end, the degradation. Yeah. This was the first shot that Satan gave to the word of the apostles and made the people uh, come without any direction uh, or where to go. That's why we said that uh, people that reject the direction of God becomes a nation without order, without direction because there's no government of the Lord, because the Lord rules through His Word. And those that obey the Word of God, they are happy, they are glad. Because why? Because we have government, we have, uh, we have a, a direction for us. So, saints, know how precious it is for us to be under this wonderful government of the Lord. Besides the happiness that I see in everyone's faces here. But, but we are not happy because we are happy by nature. But because we are under God's rule. We have this word that gives us direction. And we are filled with the light of the word that gives us opportunity to practice the word. Thank the Lord for that. So the first shot that Satan gave uh to the prophetic word and it started degradation and the second shot was in the beginning of the second century as i mentioned 
was introduced in hierarchy through the works of the Nicolaites that uh, started to show uh, a group that thought it was superior to the other. The others, uh, 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 they don't understand the work of God, they don't understand the subject, how to serve God, and only a group is a specialist. So, the, uh, the hierarchy was introduced, so the clergy and, uh, and those that uh, 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 and the second, a core, it was uh, related to money. Man couldn't, didn't know how to handle money, and, uh, and Satan was subtle. You know that money is a human necessity, a new human need for us to survive, for our sustenance. And Satan used this weapon to dominate us. And the Bible, we, we see clearly, but I will not speak in detail that uh, avarice is idolatry. We start to obey God, Mammon, and can come under his influence. If we continue like this, we'll be in, in, in continue to sustain the degradation. The third shot that Satan gave was to give wages to the clergy. Who receives wages or who gives wages uh, dominates over that receives wages. That's why the Lord wants to make this return to the original state of the church that He designed. So thank the Lord. He starts speaking to the church in Philadelphia. And he says that he, this thing says, he who is holy, he who is true. You know that because of disobedience of just one man, we lost this contact with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So when we fell, He disconnected from the Holy God and lost righteousness and became a sinner because of disobedience of Adam. And in the same chapter, verse 12 reads, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death, sp death spread to all men, because all sin. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So man, disconnected from the only the one that is holy, the one that is true, God. And then death started to rule over man through sin. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, let us read first the verse 10 of Romans 3. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And verse 22 says, Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
And verse 24 it reads, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we were without a, a way to come back to the holy and true God because we lack God's righteousness. Thank the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ came to his earth, died on the cross for us, and uh, performed a uh, eternal redemption. And through the redemption of Jesus Christ, we could be justified freely by his grace. So the problem of righteousness was was then uh, fulfilled. And then we had the problem of holiness because our God is a holy God. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 reads, Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. So once we were justified, made righteous by uh, receiving faith, we receive God's life and holy nature. So your spirit is sanctified, but your soul still needs to be sanctified because our God is holy. I don't know if you're understanding everything that I'm saying, but man, through transgression of Adam, he was disconnected from God. And on this connection, man entered, uh, sin entered man and death also, and sin and death went to all men, and man fell and lacked the grace of God. So man was destined to eternal death, eternal damnation. But thank the Lord, the Lord sent his, uh, his son and died for us and uh, executed God's righteous, uh, just justice, God's righteousness for us, dying on the cross for us. So our justification is not by works. As the church in Thyatira, allow the prophet uh, Jezebel to prophesy lies. And there was, a, there was a lie that man needed to be justified. We need to fulfill certain rules, demands, penitence, and many deformation came from that that even indulgences could be sold to diminish uh, uh, the penance of sins. And the church, uh, so to say, had the authority uh, to forgive uh, sinful intentions. If the, uh, the church forgave and gave salvation to one, it, it would, uh, so it would uh, remove so all that deformation in, uh, that we saw in the church in Taitara gave many power, painful power to control nations, through the, even kings they had fear of the papal authority because if the Pope declared that, that a king was to be excommunicated. Uh, that person was then declared to go to hell. So that's because that authority, uh, uh, and we saw that in the Reformation brought this light and saw that justification is not by works, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That was the fight of the reform. So but to be justified, uh, there's one step, and uh, uh, this step is sanctification, because God is holy. But it's important for you to understand that in the day that you believe in Jesus, 
you gain a holy position. You were justified. Your spirit was regenerated. Your spirit was sanctified. Your spirit is sanctified when you believe in the Lord Jesus. But your soul, your mind, your emotion and will still need to be sanctified. And how you do this is through your Christian life, through the time that you live in the church. So God, through the word, I will explain, God, through the word, will, will sanctify also your disposition. So not only you were transferred, like for instance, this class was in the world, but one day, you accepted the Lord Jesus and you believed in the Lord Jesus. So the blood of Jesus executes justification by the faith in the Lord Jesus. You are justified. And when you believe in the Lord Jesus, your spirit is sanctified. And not only your spirit is sanctified, God transfer you from the world, from the common place to the house of God. So this transference made you become in a holy position. You are you were in the world, but a transfer made to the house of God. Now you have a holy position, uh, a sanctification of your position. A calf that was in the field it was a common calf in the world. But when it was brought to the altar of the Lord to be sacrificed, this calf is transferred to a holy place. Do you understand? There was a change of position in us. We are in a holy place. But our soul needs a transformation, a dispositional transformation. The Lord needs to transform, sanctify my mind, my emotion, and my will. I'll explain uh, clearly. We don't need to worry. You will understand when I finish. Our God is a holy God. I already read this with you on John chapter 17. Let us read. John chapter 7, verse 3. Let me remind you of this. Do you remember? The teenagers don't remember? John 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. Who is the Lord? The only true God. The holy God, through the word. You are in a position, in a holy position. You were, uh, for, for, for you to understand, you were a dirty glass in the world, but the Lord took you, cleansed you, cleaned you, and put you in this place under a holy faucet. And on this position, you can receive what? Receive the word that made you holy. So if diligently you hear my voice and keep my commandments, so not, it's not just to hear, but to practice. Hear the word and practice because all the word of God is to execute. We receive in the word of God, a word of command. It's not like to hear just hearing a play. And then you make a review for that play. No. Every, hear that, uh, every word that you hear from the word of God, you need to execute. You need to practice. So, if you hear diligently my voice and keep my commands, you become my own uh, property amongst all nations. 
Why is that? Because you're different from all the rest. Different for all people. Although there are many people on this earth, I have many people, but you are special. You are holy. That's why I say, become kingdom of priests, uh, a, a, a kingdom of priesthood, and a holy nation. The Lord wants a holy nation. That is, okay. let us get closer to God. For, for, for us to be that, uh, get closer to God, we need to be holy. And how to be holy? Through the word. If you hear diligently the word and keep my commandments, you become some special property amongst all people. Oh, Lord Jesus. John 17. I read about the truth, but there's more. So let us go back to John 17, verse 3. In which way God can make us holy? Chapter 17, verse 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. The Lord allows us to live in this world still. We are still in this world, but Jesus as the Father for not, do not remove us to take us from the world. But the Lord wants for us to execute His will here on this world, but to keep us, keep us from the evil one. Verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Saints, we are in this world, but we don't belong to this world. We are not anymore the, those sinners that were not redeemed. Thank the Lord for the redemption of the Lord Jesus. We are justified. We are separated to God. Even though we are still in the world, in the world we will do God's will. But we don't belong to the world. We don't belong to this world. We're not of this world. So what the Lord will do to make us a holy nation? The Lord needs, us to, needs to sanctify us. So verse 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So, what is the way the Lord has when we are transported from commonplace to a holy place and for Him able to sanctify us internally, dispositionally, is through the Word. So, it's dispensing the Word to man and man receiving this Word, allowing this word to sanctify us. And the word of God is the truth. So holiness and truth, for they are uh, connected, with the one and connected. Ephesians chapter 5 makes it even clear what I am seeing. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for uh, her that he might sanctify and cleanse her. Lord loved the church so much that he gave himself for her. But, and, but there's an objective. Many don't, don't want to stop just here. Say, oh, we're not sinner anymore. The Lord died for us. I'm, I'm converted to God. I will not go to hell anymore. I'm going to heaven. We'll just become good Christians. But the Lord died for us. He gave himself for us. For, for what? There's an end. That he might sanctify 
not only the Lord brought the church to a holy place, but the process that Christ wants to make uh, with the church is to sanctify the church from inside. And how you sanctify the church from inside? To uh, sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Saints, we were unclean, we were dirty, we were in sin, death, but the Lord took us and put us in a holy place, and the Lord wants to sanctify us, the Lord needs to cleanse us. So the water makes these two functions, in one and He sanctifies us, bringing the holy elements of God, it also cleanses us to remove uh, death, uh, elements of impurities of sin from us, right? <coughs> it's exactly what the blood does in your body. The bloodstream is the prophetic word that makes the life circulate in your body. In one way, bringing the nutrients, oxygen, to all the cells of your body, in other words, bring the life and uh, holy life and nature to each member of the body of Christ through the Word. But on the other end, the bloodstream also removes from each cell a carbon dioxide, carbonic gas, or, uh, remove the waste toxins, and everything that needs to be removed from your body. So there's a, pro a process of cleansing. On one way, the Lord is putting inside you the holy life, or holy nature of God, and on the other hand, He is removing every sin, rebel, a ego, the uh, natural man, envy, everything that is on the natural, sinful man, being removed. That this doesn't happen once and for all, but it's little by little. That's why the Lord is making this process through the Word to present uh, the, uh, the church's glorious church. This is the church the Lord wants to obtain. And, and for almost 19 to 20 centuries, uh, the Lord couldn't obtain this with the church, but now is the time. Let us give the Lord this glorious church. He might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That he should be holy without blemish. This is something that only the Lord can do. Saints, the Word of God does all this work. That's why Paul speaks. What is the way for us to be filled with the Spirit? The work that the Lord wants to do uh, to make, make Christ be our uh, head of the church is to fill the church, fill the members of the body of Christ. But fill with what? Fill with the holy life. Filled with the holy nature of God. Filled with the, the truth itself. Reality itself. But it's through the word. Through the word. That's why Paul says, be filled with the spirit. Don't, not with the wine, the, the salute, but filled with the spirit. Speaking to one another. So what is each member speaking? Circulating. The word circulates, immersion, ruminating the word, uh, circulating this, making this two of the word. And the, uh, this word reaches every member of the body of Christ, it builds up the church and eliminates everything that is wasteful. And Paul also speaks in Colossians. 
that Christ dwell richly in you. The word of Christ. Struck and at each one mutually. The members of body Christ need to circulate what? Circulate gossip, doctrines. No. Circulate the word of life, the word of truth. This is what the Lord do. Word of Christ dwell in you, rich. Oh, you're inventing this. No, I'm not inventing this. This was Lord was said in Deuteronomy chapter six. Uh, said first, the Lord presents in Deuteronomy six the commandments, the institutes. You need to keep the word for what? So that you, your son, and the son of your son, children of your children. He may have life. So they may be blessed and occupy the land that I'm giving to you. And that your days may be prolonged. God already said that to the people of Israel. Now let's see in the Torah, in chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord is one. Just one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength. Don't divide this love with the world. If someone loves the world, the love of the Father is not with him. He's a zealous God. He's jealous. He doesn't want to divide your heart with the world. So that's why we need to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. And how do I do this? I don't have capacity to do this. But verse 6 gives me the secret. And these things which I command you today shall be in your heart. Saints, it's not a doctrinary teaching that I keep the word to love the Lord. No. The word needs to be inculcated into us, to be engraved in our heart. This, you shall teach and diligently, diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. So this is to sleep with God, to wake up with God, all the time ruminating the word, to make this word circulate inside us. Day and night. It's, clear. it's quite clear. This is the process of sanctification. Because in Philadelphia, the Lord presents in the church of Philadelphia, He's holy. That's why it says, Be holy, for I am holy. Let us speak about the truth. He is the truth. If you disconnect of the only true God, you go where? You are connected to what? To nothing. And nothing here is the father of lies, is the devil. Where we saw this? The Lord speaks to the Jews. You are the, of the devil. When you are disconnected from God, this is 8.44 of John. When you're disconnected from God, so we are in sin and death enters into all men. So you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. When we are not connected to the only true God, it can only be connected to lie, 
to the Father of Lies. And in the Father of Lies, there's no truth, because it was never connected to the truth. God gave the opportunity to Lucifer in the beginning, gave opportunity to him, but he never stood in the truth. So let us stand in the truth. Let us connect to the true God. And how can we be connected to the true God and receive the truth? So remove all the remains of flies in us. Our soul life is still filled uh, with uh, empty spaces of enviness, of falseness, of uh, of uh, spaces that we think they're spiritual. It's not. There are people that think they're spiritual, but there, there, there's empty places. There, it is lies. There's many things of the natural man inside us. Envy, uh, selfishness, avarice, love to the world. So many things that the Lord needs to eliminate from us. So, Saints, how can the Lord do this? He needs to fill his church with Christ. But to speak, fill the church with Christ, it seems doctrinary. We, in the past, we said, let us be filled with Christ. But fill, be filled with Christ is to be filled with what? Be filled with the truth. And what is to be if to fill with the truth? Every space that is empty, being filled, uh, that was empty with life, being filled with the truth. Through these 19 centuries, the Lord cherished to have a genuine church filled with reality. God spoke, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. But if I'm delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. So the church sustains the church in the universe. If the church is not constituted with the truth, how can sustain the truth? Sustain a doctrine, theology? No. We need to be filled with truth. In the 19th centuries of the church, many facades, they think there was just appearance, appearance of the kingdom of heaven, but, no, but doesn't have the reality of the kingdom of heaven. So the church in Philadelphia needs to reach this level to be this, uh, this pillar and ground of the truth. To sustain the truth, we need to be filled with the truth. Uh, here, we don't need, uh, we cannot be Christians of just facade, of our appearance, just to have a a uh, nickname of a Christian. No, we need to be filled with truth. And to be filled with truth is, 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 is how? It's through the Word. The Word brings us uh, holiness and brings us truth. So we start to have consistency in us. We are not empty. Saints, if you doubt me, How many years this teenager started the House of Kings? Hearing Laura de Freitas. Seven months. And in Salvador. Even last time. Five months. Five months. Give me. Uh, more half a year. You see these teenagers. They are doing immersion in the Word. Love the Word. Uh, write down the Word. Take notes. Hear it again, the Word. Give more uh, half a year. 
you see the difference and the consistency of that that they will have. They are not just absorbing doctrines, they are allowing the truth to be deposited into them. Perhaps they don't they don't even realize this, but what they are practicing, merging the word, they are allowing the truth to be deposited into them. Little by little. And I speak this. I speak this because I know this. I know of teenagers of more than a year already doing this. I, I perceive I, I can see their consistency. They they don't despise their youth. Some of them, excuse me if I say this, they they can even they can even uh, uh, are above some religious people. So don't give up of the word. Don't give up of allowing the word to be inculcated into your heart. This will make the whole difference. Uh, time will pass and we will not have just appearance of piety, of godliness, as Paul said. There are some people that, uh, forgive me say, to say this, but there are people that deceives with this appearance of godliness. Oh, let us pray. Let us wait in God. But this is just the experience of spirituality. We need to have consistency. Consistency through the Word. Immersion in the Word. Inculcating the Word. The teenagers know what is God's will. The teenagers will quickly will go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Why? Because they have consistency. They are being, uh, th this word is being constituted to them. Fortunately, the gradation. Why, uh, so, why, uh, what, what is. Let us read John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because the Father is the only true God. He is a holy one. No one can come to the Father that is holy, that is true, if not through Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, he is also the truth. So can you be connected to the Father, and He is the life. This life is the holy life. Is the life with the holy nature of God. If you are filled with Christ, you are being filled with life. You are being filled with reality, with truth. You have a free way to the Father. And he, this Father, He is the Holy, He is the True. Fortunately, saints, the gradation set the church aside from the truth. We read that in First Timothy. Timothy. No, let us read that. Second Timothy three fifteen. The gradation. Cast aside the church from the truth, from the truth, and fill falsehood and vanity. A Sardis was not able to fulfill the word, and Laodicea does have appearance of godliness, but doesn't have power. 2 Timothy 3, 3, 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. 
people that have the appearance of spirituality. Oh, how spiritual I am. It doesn't have power. Only has appearance of godliness. We need the power of the Word. The Word of God brings us power. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's why, saints, God needs to fill the church. Ephesians chapter 3. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. So it's not just doctrine. Allow saints for the Lord to dwell in your heart. Your heart is, uh, is, is made by the conscience that connects your spirit to your soul. And also done by mind, emotion and will. So allow Christ to dwell in your heart. To abide in your mind in your emotion and in your will that you being rooted and grounded in love when you allow Christ to abide in your heart dwell in your heart you 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 set roots you're grounded in in, in, in the love of God because God is love. God makes through Jesus this get this love to reach us. Everything is done through this foundation of love. Without love, the work of God doesn't exist. So God is love and, and roots us and grounds us in his love. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the width and length and depth and the height? Here it doesn't say what, of what, but we understand that it's dimensions of Christ. With length and depth and height, it, this is not physical elements itself. We, uh, we, when we read this, we think of uh, physical dimensions, how many miles or kilometers but we are not speaking of physical dimensions here. Here are dimensions of the eternity, of the another dimension, God's dimension. That's why we cannot understand through our logic. That's, thank the Lord we are inserted into the body. When we are inserted in the body, we all together seeking the Lord Locating the word will be able to be taken to the another dimension. That's why we say that the church is in the another dimension. We want to be with Christ in another dimension. We say that Christ's things are not limited to the physical, visible things. And faith is a portal that allows you to uh, pass from this physical dimension that here to to God's dimension spiritual that you can see the unlimited reality God we will be all be able to know this dimension with all the brothers of Christ with all the brothers of Christ I'm just a member that's why we need to live the church life with the saints this church life is that allows us to go to another dimension. That's why this joy is because we are being transported through this portal. We are going to this dimension of the eternity uh, experiencing things that we cannot experience on this dimension, earthly dimension. We are comprehended with all the saints this dimension of Christ and know the love of Christ is something that is intangible, but we are being able to know the love of Christ that exceeds all, which passes knowledge. Our mind cannot comprehend for what? What is the end? What is the goal of all, all of, of all of this? 
It's not for, for like someone says, oh, I'm spiritual, I study the Bible, I'm this and that. No, that you may be filled, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The objective of God, God's objective is for, makes a, 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 as we live here as a church, is to what? Is to fill us, fill us, fill with Christ. God is filling us with Christ, with his reality, with his truth, with his life, until the fullness of God. So when the church reaches this level of the fullness of God, then God can use the church as an instrument to what? Didn't I say that you know this? So that Christ may be head over all things. So when church is being filled and uh, 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 can reach the level to says God to be uh, head over all things. So it's the fullness of him who fills all in all. When the church reaches this level, this fullness, then the church is finally able to be used to put all things under Christ to be the head, all things on earth and in heaven. That's why it's important. The church in Philadelphia has this God that is holy and is true because he wants to obtain something that is consistent, that can bring the Lord back and uh, fulfill God's will. I think I said everything here. Oh, oh, we have some time still. Let us speak about so a bit of the history. I spoke about Sardis on the last message. The church in Sardis. Even though the Reformation brought wonderful things like the open Bible, God Thank the Lord all of us has, have the open Bible for us. But even though we have the Bible open for us, and the fundamental truth of restored, that is justification by faith. The formation, even from the 16th century, until the 18th century, 19th century, 19th century, didn't left this uh, restored truth that is justification by faith. So it, co it could continue on this, uh, this way because there was this struggle to be set free from the papal struggle that they concentrated on themselves in this. But God shouldn't, couldn't stop on just this. There were many things that needed to be restored. And one of the things that I was missing here was the government over the church. It was uh, Christ being the head over the church. And to have the head need to restore the function of the body of Christ, of the members of the body of Christ. The church is a living organism. After uh, since left the church in Thyatira, the Reformation continue stuck on many things that Thyatira was still stuck. For instance, they, they were set free from the church in Thyatira, but became a man that became a state, or a state church like in Germany. The reform needed political support and they made the Protestant religion to become the state religion. So instead of Christ being the head of the church, the King of England was the church, uh, uh, was the head of the church in the Anglican Church. That's why when when uh, speaks up to Sardis, says that you have the name that lives, but it's dead. 
Uh, uh, Lord said, you are, I'm restoring you, but you stop there. I will show you. There was a, tr a try to leave the situation of Sardis and go to Philadelphia and here in the 18th century. Perhaps you have heard about Count Zinzerdorf. In the 18th century, many people uh, confuse. Uh, uh, just, uh, I will read what I uh, what I prepare here. 18th century, many men like Count Sinzendorf welcomed the saints of Bohemia, uh, where John Huss was born. I have spoke about him in the past. Was one of the reformed that was burned alive. So he was from this land of Bohemia. They were being persecuted. Those that formed a, an evangelical church known as Unitas Fratrum. That is uh, Union of the Brothers or Brother Union. What does it mean? It means that they finally saw that hierarchy the church we don't have hierarchy in the church, there's no clergy. So they started to call one another brothers. But this has a, a, a background as well. They were being persecuted when Bohemia was overcame by Austria, was conquered by Austria, and a new government planted the counter uh, Catholic counter-reform to exterminate the evangelical. That's why they fled the region from Bohemia and they, they, they fled to Zinzen, uh, that Zinzerdorf prepared. Zinzerdorf was born in a high society of Dresden, Germany in the state of Saxon, his property in Herrnhut, in East Germany, where a Morav revival started that generated many deep desires of sanctification and missionary dedication. So we saw here a sign he already sought to revive the members of Sardis. After a few centuries, they were already cold. And through many small meetings of biblical study, prayer, they were called uh, little churches inside the church. Ecclesiolae in Ecclesia. So movement ruled by Spanner. But this movement was not beyond gathering uh, the believers and seek for blessing. All those that have a, a background, they only uh, gather in this place to seek for blessing. They didn't set a sort of revelation in the word about the oneness of the body of Christ, nor how Christ was in fact head of the church. Still, there was a beginning of uh, dismantling of the clergy system, and they began to call one another brothers. So I want to give this registry of this part. They gather people from different uh, backgrounds, religious background, and they welcomed all of them in his property, and they could have struggle. Oh, I'm from this group. I am from this ideology, Christian ideology. I'm from this and I'm from that. But no, he said, here, all of us are brothers. We will not fight. We are all brothers. But it was not more than that, but at least he started this. It was already beginning of breaking the clerical system, the clergy. And they started to call one another brothers. But it, does, it was not more, much more than this. 
But then we reached 19th century. The Reformation brought the Christians an open Bible to the, uh, to the public. But basically, it stopped uh, in the light of the truth that, uh, that sent them free from the corrupted system of Rome of justification by, and brought them to justification by faith. Those that dared to examine the Word of God more deeply were censored and called heretics, fanatical, and innovators. So those that came after Luther continued to be associated with an ecclesiastical system in their country, having rulers as their head, uh, connected to a state. And those that left the ecclesiastic system were uh, instituted many Christian groups that had the same opinion and some doctrinary uh, points like Baptist, uh, the share of bread, or the ruling of the church. Each institution differentiated from one another by their own confession of faith they all have their own confession of faith and adoption of a denomination as a own organization, separating itself one from the others. Many denominations, many divisions okay, in the Protestantism. But in the first or part of the 19th century, God started to work in Christians better comprehension with respect to the oneness between Christians, the oneness of the body of Christ, that Christ is the head. So in the, this beginning of the 19th century, these uh, reformation, this, uh, this seek, uh, they started to seek. The church is a religious institution. It is a place for people to feel well and to have uh, services. No, it's a living body. The church is the body of Christ. So, there was started to have a movement towards this direction. And this manifestation was something new that didn't happen since the days of the apostles. Since the first century, there was none that was worried about this. But now in the 19th century, the Spirit started to work. Decided to worry about the oneness of the body of Christ. Unfortunately, the Christians didn't left the great or small instituted organizations, uh, organizations that were instituted by man. They tried to practice union and oneness, giving their hands above barriers and divisions. They started to say, oh, no, yes, I'm glad we are brothers, but I I follow my process, my, my, my faith, and you follow your way of seeing faith. So 19th century also became a century of missions, reaching China, saying the Lord of China was reached, Japan, Africa, Amir Si. Africa was during this time, especially Uganda. New Zealand, Tasmania, and Fiji Islands. It was during this time there was awakening uh, regarding the coming of our Lord. Who loves the coming of our Lord is everything is related to Philadelphia. So this made a, a movement of the uh, movement called the Brothers Arise. This is also here in Brazil, it's called United Brothers. But in England, they call themselves the Brothers. It's not that they call brotherhood. The denominations called them like that, the bro uh, brotherhood. The, this movement then started the leaders of the movement of uh, Reformation, they neglected many truths 
most important truths of the Bible and, started, uh, and thought that it was sufficient, the truth about just about justification by faith, uh, among uh, papal superstition, infidelity, and immorality on the Roman clergy. There were so many ugly things in Thyatira that the Reformations thought that to be set free from this uh, evil system and defending the justification by faith would be sufficient already. But the church cannot stop there. The Spirit of God awoke some on the British islands in the first part of the 19th century to study with uh, more depth the Holy Scriptures to know better uh, concerning the words of the prophecy. Here we, we can read in Revelations chapter 1, verse 3. Revelations 1, 1 is shown. They haven't seen completely 1, 1. Because 1, 1 uh, defines how the Lord rules over the church. And because of that, there's still many disorders. But they saw the verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. So they start to pay attention to the prophecies. And from there on, many revelations started to return for them. Because of this, they're seeking. For they started to seek revelation in the church concerning uh, the word, concerning the church and government of church, but it was something abstract still. Or others were seeking the church as the bride of Christ. Like they, they even heard about this in, from the time of the apostles. They didn't spoke about this. But they started to see again the church as the, as the bride of Christ. All these are items were completely new since reform or even since the time of the apostolical fathers. This interest for the truths in the Bible made arise the prophetic meetings initially uh, they, they call the prophetic meetings that uh, had the, cler uh, the clergy and even the lay people. In Ireland, they were they were mostly uh, held by the brothers that didn't follow the clerical system and treated one another uh, as the brothers. So the the light of the word of God, they saw, they they realized they they couldn't remain in the religious system that the Reformation had fell. So they need to get testimony of the heavenly nature of the church and the oneness of God's church. So, so finally, we see that the church was finally coming back to the way of Philadelphia, understanding the holy nature of the church. We're going to this direction. And in the end of 1827, Four men started to gather in Dublin in the day of the Lord to share the bread as they did in the, uh, in, in the early days of the church. They studied for a while, uh, for a considerate time, and discovered that the Word of God, the, in the state of things that they live, didn't, it was not the same as the nature and character of the Church of God. Even the a, a national church, that is Anglican church, or in the distant groups, is brought in to separate from all the existing ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical systems and brought in to gather only in the name of the Lord Jesus. This was really strong in them. 
We don't. We only meet in the name of the Lord Jesus without any denomination, seeking the presence and the action of the Holy Spirit among them, and seeking to keep the unity of the Spirit in in this bonding of of peace, bond of peace. So Matthew 18 verse 20. It was something that was in, in their line of thought, thought, thought. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So they said, we don't need any denomination. If we are two or three together, gathered in the name of the Lord, the Lord is with us in our midst. And Ephesians 4, verses 3 and 4. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's, all, there's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. That was the struggle to see how actually was the church. Little by little, they were discovering this truth. So, among them, among them, uh, we can, uh, John Nelson Darby was one to be mentioned with this first publication with the title, The Nature and Oneness of the Church of Christ. His content serves as a basis, a foundation at the time for the group, and such principles are observed until today by the brothers, by the brotherhood. Many truths came to light by the biblical studies and conferences in many regions of England and abroad, especially by Darby. Still, this prosperity didn't pay, it, it was not unnoticed by Christianhood. In the beginning, they were object of curiosity and of bewilderment, and then of consternation and even hostility. The fact that they didn't adopt a name as the other denomination you, you don't have priests, you don't have a denomination, you want to be different. They started to persecute these saints. <coughs> Again, initially, they were, uh, they were object of curiosity, but then they became hostile to them. The fact that they didn't have the name as the other denominations constrained all, uh, all the others. That's because it, it seems that they were defining the error of the others. The others are wrong. We are not a denomination. So they felt that they were being constrained by this. They started to be being persecuted. So they were denominated according to a place that they were gathering. And according to the names that the men, uh, the, uh, the men that were meeting with them. For instance, the saints of Plymouth were used for those that met uh, around the port, English port of Plymouth. <coughs> they saw the mistake of the clerical system, started to call one another saintless brothers. This is based on Matthew 23, 8. Let us read. These verses are the verses that were the foundation for their attitude. But you do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. We are brethren. The five don't have titles. There's pastors, yes. There's masters, yes. We don't use that as a title, as a function. Lord Jesus. And they recognize what is written in Matthew 18, 20, that we also read. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. That is why they rejected any formal organization of a Christian denomination. 
they believe in the presence and the sovereign action of the Holy Spirit in the word of the Lord based in John 16, 7 to 14. Let us read. John 16. They believed in this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I... I will not read until 14. But for you to understand that... Christ died and the Spirit was sent and we have the Spirit of truth that will guide us to all truth. Therefore, the visions that we there have received, but still they lack the vision that the review world word needed to come from an authorized channel to people of God at this word of command. So they lacked this word of command. This allowed that the division came to them. So 20 years later, there was a division in Plymouth. Between the years of 1845 and 1848, uh, I'm reading here the description made by Andrew Miller. I don't have the authority to speak here, but I'm reading his, uh, his description. The enemy was working silently through Newton, one of the first workers in Plymouth, being, uh, and they follow, he followed us a distinct course from the other. He exercised great influence over the members there, and after a while, on the cover, started to undermine and neutralize the teachings from the other brothers, promoting the entry of clergy they gradually grow, grew until become a defined system. Uh, until 1848, it was evident his ecclesiastical mis uh, grave mistakes, but also heresies against uh, towards Jesus humanity, as Andrew Miller wrote in his book *The History of the Church*. This is so what. Andrew Miller wrote, there was many a misunderstanding according to accepting the fellowship and the sharing of bread. One were in favor of being strict uh, to acceptance to zeal the principles of the body, of the, of the Bible, sorry, to avoid the entry of heresy. So they were finding so, uh, if they needed to be open or not in the sharing of bread. They started to pay attention to the oneness of the, uh, the body of Christ. And they saw the sharing of bread as something, something strict of acceptancy of the fellowship of the body. If you should be accepted as a member of the body or not. So, started to have this division. Uh, on, on those that were close to Darby, I thought that they needed to be strict. So, those who they admitted to share the bread with them. This inheritance gives so many importance to the sharing of bread, reach it us. That's why you see, we were deeply influenced by. That's why some uh, start to fight. No, I already established sharing of bread. You're establishing a bread division. This became, in this came, this vision came with the, with the brotherhood, the United Brothers. Some accepted to, uh, so uh, uh, some said that we, uh, to, to share the bread, you needed to be clear that you are part of the body of Christ if you're not under any heresy. So, 
So they became a group called the Exclusive Saints, Close Saints. And Newton was more open. He was more, more open. They accepted, accepted everything. And all could participate of the fellowship. They paid a lot of attention to the share of bread. And what happened? Those that were faithful to the original principle of the brothers, of the brethren, they started to preserve the honor of the head and the stable, committing themselves to the word and the will of God. They started to be called the exclusive brothers. And no one sustained uh, the point of view of Newton uh, should, uh, should be receiving fellowship. If you are part of Newton's side, you cannot share the bread with us. So there was this schism between them. Even those that were seeking to have fellowship with the brother, they, uh, they were separated. So it's still, it's not like this. So the saints that follow Newton will call the neutral brethren or open brethren, open brothers, because of their neutrality in relation to heresy by the adoption of an independent line towards the church. Perhaps in the next message, I will mention a bit more about this, but I want to say to you, saints, that even Watchman Nee, he, his book, The Orthodoxy of the Church, he says, the brethren, united brethren, they went to the right direction. But what failed there? What failed? They, they sought, uh, they, they saw, uh, it is, but they haven't saw the limit of the locality of the, the, of the city. I will continue to speak about this next message. The, this is also right, brought great benefit, but it's not sufficient as well. The Lord opened to us more things. So what happened? The, the saints that were um, more closed, exclusive, they became one group, whatever they are. They formed like the, it was another church. In the vision of Watchman E, uh, a unity more, that was bigger than one city. And the open saints, they saw it like a Watch money. Uh, the path of cong congregationalism, uh, the independent congregation. Oh, here we have our, our own preachers, our own line, but one, between one, uh, one congregation to another, we, we accept one another. We are open brothers, open brethren. But you define yourself and we define ourselves. But con by convenience, we are together. Saints, some uh, among us that left, unfortunately, they took this path uh, of this congregationalism. Uh, congreg oh, each congregation, they, they seek their own path. Uh, they have their own preachers. They're independent, but they don't stop seeking this path. But it's not like that, saints. The church is more than that. It's the body of Christ. So I'll read. The necessary steps for Philadelphia. First, we need to deal with the lust of the first love. Revelations 2, verse 4. Let us read. Why did the Christian start it? Nevertheless, I have this against you. 
seeing that if in, in Ephesus everything was correct, but they were lacking the first love. They left the first love. And why did they leave the first love? Because they left the word. The lack of, of the revering love it, that believing that the word of God brings the God, the word of God brings the government of of God and does the work of God. The love that you have for the word is uh, worthy of praise, and we follow this love for the word of God is is what generate the first love between them, the first love that is best love for the Lord. They're crazy for the Lord. Our, our boys or the girls here, they're crazy for the Lord. Don't you see that? They're simple. They don't have worms in their head. They don't have questioning. They love the Word because they have the first love. To the other day, there were no one. They were locked, each one, into their own rooms, playing games. They don't have any future, but now... They love so much the Word. The, the, the Word is direction for them. They have the first love for the Lord. Am I seeing something that is, uh, that is wrong or not? No. Uh, if you lose the first love, it's because you are, or, you are already... You don't believe that Apostle Paul was the one that was... Uh, was the one that is being used to bring the word of God to us, or John was being bringing the word of truth for us. That's why you lose the first love. The first thing you need to uh, restore the love for the teaching of the apostles. Acts 2.42, we need to restore this line, the teaching of the apostles. That's why this matter. The breath, uh, United Brethren, to restore this through the conferences or prophetic meetings. Because the Lord was using them in this transition to bring to, to light many truths. Many truths were being bring, brought. So all these biblical conferences, uh, prophetic meetings for this light to come. But when the apostles' teaching was restored, it's not like this that you uh, act anymore. And then after the, the teaching of the apostles, that we have many biblical teachings, free teachings. So each one gives their own teaching. Then we come back to the Greek culture, democracy where one philosopher brings their own philosophy line. No, it's not like that in the church. There's one channel uh, for, that brings the word of God in the church. So the process in Philadelphia, this, 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 was, uh, this worked. This was used, the prophetic meanings, uh, the meanings. But when we have... Uh, the teaching of the apostles. Uh, we, we have to have fellowship in, in in these teachings. It's not for me to give another interpretation for the word. Uh, not a, each one giving their own interpretation how they like. This confuse the word of God. So I want to give the word to you. We need to restore teaching of the apostles to believe and obey and practice the prophetic word inculcated in our hearts. Restore the love. And produce the first love for the Lord and brotherly love for the build up of the church, constituting the truth and divine reality. This is what I say to you, saints. It's like sewing. The vertical, the vertical uh, cloth, the warp and the web. Uh, web. The, so the warp comes from the above, bring, uh, and then the web is the, 
is the uh, horizontal uh, lines, right? This is what the, uh, this is divine love and brotherly love that we are making this cloth of love. This is the build up of the church. The build up of the church is not to put interpretations, but it's being intertwined by the love of God. We are consolidating into the word of God. We, the brotherly love, is a result of the word, is a result of the word. Second point, then, for Philadelphia is to reject the works of the Nicolaites, eliminating for complete the clerical system and restoring the function of each member for the build-up of the body of Christ. That means restoring totally the priests of, of each one of us, this is what the Lord is doing with one of us. Our children, our teenagers, pre-teenagers, young ones, intendants, supply corps, all of us are useful in the body of Christ. All of us are being able to ex execute our priesthood, right? Oh, Lord Jesus, this is wonderful. We are living the best moments. And more than that, I will use the word of a pastor. Spoke about the Paldeans. There was a moment that was quite genuine from the Spirit. Andrew Miller says that uh, before that it was the Albigians. But I want to speak about the Valdeans. Why? In the New Testament, they, they, they sent to translate the Bible to the Frank provincial language that was the language of the region to, so they allow their, to, to leave uh, they couldn't reveal the word that we're translating, but they left with this word hidden into their tunics in a, in a bag inside their clothes close to the neck. So they perceived that someone wanted and uh, had the car to receive the word. So they, this, this uh, sales people from, from his company removed and gave this word to them and this they were persecuted for their, they were massacred, persecuted, they suffered such horrific sufferings. It is a really sad story, but the Valdeas never gave up. It was hard to distinguish them. They were from the uh, time of the uh, 12th century, they were on the silver line of the work of God, even in those dark ages. But still to this day, uh, some of them still exist, but their vigor had disappeared. But the pastor said that when they adhered to the Reformation in the 16th century, they became another group in the time of the Reformation, then they they <coughs> stopped this movement. So he said two things that he said that we should be alerted. Why it stopped? Why they stopped? Because we need to believe that we need to, we cannot be frozen, be held to the revelations that the Lord gave us so far. We always need to receive new revelation. This is a key point. You th think that the Lord already gave all the revelations, you're already glad with that. And you, you, will held, you will held yourself to those revelations, you will die with them. You will stop the work, you will stop in time. But the Lord always has new revelations. Because the revelation, that is the word of God, that makes us move onward to execute his work 
or is the work of uh, the will of God is completely executed? If the Lord didn't came back yet, it's because the Lord need, continues to need to reveal to us more revelations. And secondly, when the evangelistic vigor, then the strength of the church, the vigor of the church also ends. So it cannot be a church of four walls. And the Lord took us from this situation, brought us to the street. We are going to the streets. We are not uh, theoreticians, just studying the Bibles inside four walls. No, the Lord is giving us revelation, but we practice our mission to preach the gospel in the streets. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the king will be preached to all we have to the earth, the testimony of all the nations, and then the end will come. It's our responsibility, it's our mission to keep this evangelistic fire, evangelistic mission, uh, vigor. This, this is our battle line. We cannot lose the evangelistic vigor. We cannot lose the love for the word, the revealed word. We need to restore always to restore the function of the members of the body of Christ. Priesthood is for all. No one needs, uh, should substitute anyone. All should have their opportunity, even before the meeting. I was speaking of Brother Amir Maurício and Jones. We need these days. Don't think that we are here just uh, uh, relaxing. No, we are observing here many young ones, children, that, that uh, many young ones that need to be shoulder with shoulder together. We see that there are many good people here. Let us pick them to perfect, let us perfect them, let us introduce them, let us not cast them away, let us include, so that all have opportunity to serve the Lord. Not only have the vision of the unity of the church, but seek reality of the body of Christ, of which Christ is the head, is to rule the church through the review word to his apostles. Prophetic word is the voice of command of Christ, is the revelation of the authority of the Holy Spirit in the church. You may say, oh, the church, uh, watch money, when it's already written their books, uh, the church receive authority of the Holy Spirit. But how? Isn't this abstract? Do we have authority of the Holy Spirit or not in the church? But how do we know this? The authority of the Holy Spirit is in the Word. If you recognize that the Word of God is a voice of command, is a voice that commands the church, you know what is the authority of the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. So I want to end here. So I want to end So uh, for you to understand this. Why we are speaking about the history of the church? Why? It's not just for knowledge. It's for you to have a GPS. You know, the church went through which path and where you are and where are you going? What is the destiny? You are not lost here. Uh, as I was lost here in Northeast for two hours and a half, Brother Jobson is the guilty one for that. Two year, uh, two hours and a half, I was lost without knowing where to go. My 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 back started to wake. I didn't have any GPS. I didn't know where to go. Uh, where to go? I don't know. But thank the Lord we have a GPS. We know where we are going. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.